Welcome to the Mrs. Silva Reading and Writing Show. The day the boa tried to eat Mrs. Silva. She was doing laundry like every other day. And what did she find? A boa constrictor inside. As she walked down the steps, there she saw him again. And she ran away screaming. She sat down to read a book and she looked to her right. And what did she see? He was back when she realized that all the boa wanted to do was sit down and read a book with her. And they sat down and read a very good book, except when the boa ate the book. That didn't go over very well. And Mrs. Silva and the boa became the best of friends. All right, guys. So today we're going to be reading one of my favorite books. I'm going to tell you about it in a second. But as we're reading, we're going to be looking for a few things. And one of those are sequencing or transition words. And sequencing and transition words are words that tell us what's going to come next or what's going to happen last. So some of those words that we might hear could be next or last, eventually, however, then. All of those words are sequencing words. In addition to that, with sequencing in any type of story, we wanna make sure that the story flows. We don't wanna say, I got up in the morning, brushed my teeth, and then ate breakfast. Well, isn't there a problem? Should you not eat breakfast and then brush your teeth? Probably a better idea. So, you want to make sure that in any story that your sequence is in order, that whatever happened first, second, and third, there's a natural flow to it. Again, you don't go swimming before you put on your swimsuit. You want to put on your swimsuit and then go swimming. So you want a natural order or flow to things. In addition to sequencing and transition in a book, you also want to make sure that as you're writing and, and reading as well, because it's important as you're reading a book as well, you want to make sure that you have action that speeds up the story and then slows down in the story. And that means you want what we call a climax and that you want to build to a climax. And that's kind of like the tip of a mountain. And so when you build to a climax, that's kind of like the, oh my goodness, what's going to happen next? And then the downhill slope is, oh, this is what happens after that big, big blowout or big blow up um, that happened. So even in books like The Lemonade War, whenever you're reading it, here you've got this argument between Jesse and Evan and then all of a sudden it blows up and it explodes to where they're putting slugs in their lemonade and taking each other's money and things like that. And so you want the action to speed up just like it did, but you also want it to slow down. So as we read the book that we're going to be reading today, I want you to be listening for how the sequencing and transition goes. So do those words, does it, does it naturally flow? Do you hear some of those sequencing and transition words as well? And in addition to those sequencing and transition words through a book, does the action speed up and then slow down? Or is it just constantly going fast? Or is it constantly going slow? If a book's constantly going fast or constantly going slow, it's hard to keep up if it's going too fast. And then if it's going slow, it's kind of boring and you don't really want to read it anymore. So you want to make sure that you speed up and you slow down so you're not, you're not doing too much of one of those. So the book that we're reading today is The Day Jimmy's Boa Ate the Wash. Like I said, this is one of my favorite books. I believe I read it in third grade. This is my boa. I got him at Disney World many, many years ago. You can tell he's starting to fade just a little bit. Um, but this is one of my favorite books because I think it is quite funny. So The Day Jimmy's Boa Ate the Wash by Trinka Hakes Noble, pictures by Stephen Kellogg. So, The Day Jimmy's Boa Ate the Wash. If you were gonna make a prediction about this, what do you think Jimmy's boa is going to do? Well, based on the pictures you see right here, 
And based on the title, it looks like Jimmy's boa may be eating the wash. But where do you think the kids are? Right here. Can you put in your um, in an update in the update section of Schoology? Can you tell us exactly what you think they're doing? Let us know. And if you said a field trip or learning on a farm, that kind of looks right. Let's see. How was your class trip to the farm? Oh, boring. Kind of dull until the cows started crying. A cow crying? Yeah, you see, a haystack, haystack fell on her, but a haystack doesn't just fall over. Again, looking at that sequencing and transition as we go through here. A haystack doesn't just fall over, so what happened to cause the haystack to fall over? It does if a farmer crashes into it with his tractor. Oh, come on. A farmer wouldn't do that. He would if he were too busy yelling at the pigs to get off our school bus. And what do you think our next question would be? How did the pigs get on the school bus, right? What were the pigs doing on the bus? Eating our lunches. I'm sure you can guess the next question for this one. Why were they eating their lunches? Why were they eating your lunches? Because we threw their corn at each other and they didn't have anything else to eat. I'm going to pause for a moment because that's a transition and sequence word. We threw their corn at each other and they didn't have anything else to eat. Well, that makes sense, but why were you throwing corn? Because we ran out of eggs. Out of eggs? Why were you throwing eggs? These are all very logical questions, aren't they? I mean, I wonder why they're throwing eggs too. Because of the boa constrictor. The boa constrictor? Yeah, Jimmy's pet boa constrictor. What was Jimmy's pet boa constrictor doing on the farm? Oh, he brought it to meet all the farm animals, but the chickens didn't like it. Can you imagine why the chickens probably did not like the boa constrictor? You mean he took it into the hen house? Yeah, and the chickens started squawking and flying around. Go on, go on. What happened? Well, one hen got excited and laid an egg and it landed on Jenny's head. That's speeding up the action. Oh, a hen got excited. It laid an egg on Jenny's head. The hen? No, the egg. And it broke, yucky, all over her hair. What did she do? She got mad because she thought Tommy threw it, so she threw one at him. What did Tommy do? Oh, he ducked and the egg hit Marianne in the face. Again, we're speeding up some of the action right here. So she threw one at Jenny, but she missed and hit Jimmy, who dropped his boa constrictor. Oh, I know. And the next thing you knew, everyone was throwing eggs, right? Right. Even though we've speeded up the action, we are slowing it down a little bit here. And when he ran out of eggs, you threw the pig's corn, right? Right again. Well, what finally stopped it? Well, we heard the farmer's wife screaming. Why was she screaming? Can you guys see in the picture why she was screaming? Through there? Probably a good reason. I think I would scream as well. We never found out because Mrs. Stanley made us get on the bus and we sort of left in a hurry without the boa constrictor. See how we sped up the action, but now we're slowing it down a little bit. And can you imagine going on a field trip and leaving your pet boa constrictor? I can't imagine. I bet Jimmy was sad because he left his pet boa constrictor. 
Oh, not really. We left in such a hurry that one of the pigs didn't get off the bus. So now he's got a pet pig. What do you think his mom's gonna say about that? Boy, that sure sounds like an exciting trip. Yeah, I suppose if you're the kind of kid who likes class trips to the farm. Does it look like Jimmy likes class trips to the farm? No, not really. It looks like he may have liked a class trip to space or a race car. And then look at what happened to the boa constrictor. Farmer's wife ended up keeping him and knitting a nice little sweater for the boa constrictor. So again, you heard some of those sequencing words, but you also heard sequence as we went through. Well, the eggs were thrown. Well, why were the eggs thrown? And you go through it. Well, the eggs were thrown because um, one accidentally landed on Jenny's head and she thought someone threw it. So she threw an egg at this person and that's why the eggs were thrown. And so the, it's a constant sequence or a transition throughout the book. So it's flowing naturally. It wasn't that it started with, oh, he brought a boa constrictor and dropped it and it ate the wash. Nothing like that. It is a constant flow and constant sequence that we can see in our book. We also, in addition to that sequence, we saw the action speed up and slow down. And so it sped up and you're like, oh my goodness, there's this huge egg fight. But then eventually it did slow down up to the point where it was a very quiet moment, even for the farmer and his wife. So in all of our writing, as we organize our writing, we want to make sure that everything flows naturally. We want to make sure that the sequence and the transition happens naturally. Again, it's just like we don't brush our teeth after we've eaten breakfast. Or, I'm sorry, before we've eaten breakfast. Please brush your teeth after you've eaten breakfast. But you don't brush your teeth before you've eaten breakfast typically because the point of brushing your teeth is to clean them off. So after you eat breakfast, you brush your teeth. That's a natural flow of things. The unnatural flow of things would be, I get up, I brush my teeth, I eat breakfast. Well, did you clean anything off then? No, not really. And again, the action and speeding up is another part of organizing our writing as we write. We want to make sure that we want to make sure that it speeds up and it gets up to that top of the mountain, but then we also want to make sure it starts to slow down a little bit as you're going down that mountain. You don't want something to write something that's really, really fast paced the whole way through and no, no reader can keep up. And you also don't want to write something that's so slow that people are falling asleep as you read it. So it's important that whenever you're writing, that you organize your writing with those bold beginnings we talked about last week. That's the most important because you want to draw your reader in. But then after that, you want to keep them hooked. And you want to do that by adding a sequence and a transition that flows naturally. And you want to have that action that speeds up slows down. And those are very, very important as an author, but also as a reader, because you know whenever you pick up a book, you're not going to read something that does not flow naturally, and that you're not going to read something that really doesn't ever speed up, doesn't ever slow down, or does one or the other the whole way through. You're going to want to read something that has all of that. So it's important as you organize your writing to remember that. So organizing your writing, we are looking at sequencing and speed. And we just read The Day Jimmy's Boa Ate the Wash, one of my favorite books, as I told you, and I hope it's one of your favorites now. So let's look at how we sequence and then also how we can create speed and slow it down in our writing. So The Day Jimmy's Boa Ate the Wash. First thing is sequencing, and you want to show how the ideas connect. So it's important that in all of your writing, your ideas connect. Some of the transition and sequencing words that you might um, use are then, first, next, also, finally, in fact, eventually, however. All of those are awesome sequencing words, but are they the only ones that you can use? No, there's plenty more that you can use, but these are some of the options that you have. So let's look at how Jimmy's boa, or the day that Jimmy's boa ate the wash, let's see some of the sequencing that they did. So the action was they ran out of eggs. They were completely out of eggs. Well, why were they out of eggs? They ran out of eggs. The link, the sequencing word is because they threw all of the pigs corn, 
therefore the pigs ate their lunches. So again, we see the action, but then we also see the link between them, the linking word that creates a sequence for us. We can't say they ran out of eggs and the pigs ate their lunches. That doesn't make any sense. But if we say that they ran out of eggs because they threw all of the pigs corn, that the pigs were going to eat, therefore the pigs ate their lunches then. So that's how we sequence things together. We make sure that there is a natural flow and a natural order when we link things together. Another way in organizing a writing is speed. And my ideas are in an order that really work. They speed up and they slow down when they're supposed to. It's not all speed, it's not all slow. It's a good mix of the two. So let's check out how they did that in the day Jimmy's Boa ate the wash. They sped it up. The chickens went into a frenzy because of Jimmy's Boa. So Jimmy, they saw Jimmy's Boa, they all went crazy. Um, they were throwing eggs. It was just, it was a mess. It was just a big hot mess. Then in all of that chaos, Jimmy's boa was dropped, which caused the farmer's wife to scream. All of that is speed. They have sped it up. So when we look at this book, the chickens were in a frenzy. Jimmy's boa was dropped. The farmer's wife decided to scream because the boa was eating her wash. All of that is speed. It's going quickly. It's moving quickly. And that's okay. You want it to move quickly. But you also have to have it slow down after that speed up. So let's look at how they slowed it down. So we slowed the action, or the author slowed the action. The students all left without Jimmy's boa. I mean, they heard the farmer's wife scream, and their teacher got them into that bus, and they left without the boa. And then quietly and nicely, the farmer and his wife adopted him. And I didn't put that in there, but also he said, you know, he would prefer a different kind of field trip as well. Um, whenever he, they were telling um, his mom about the field trip, he just prefer a different kind of field trip. So the students left without Jimmy's boa, said he would prefer a different kind of field trip, and the farmer's wife adopted him, and they, the farmer's wife knitted him a nice long scarf for the boa, and they seemed to really like him. But again, it went from speed to a slowdown. And so that speed carried us through and it was exciting and it was fun. Oh my goodness, all of these eggs are being thrown. Why are the eggs being thrown? Oh, wow, the boa was dropped. What's it going to do? It made the farmer's wife scream. Speed, 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 speed. And then the action slowed down. So it's important when we organize our writing, we sequence, but we also sequence so that we can have speed and we have slow down. We don't want all speed and we don't want all slow. So now it's your turn. You're going to organize your writing. So you're going to take both the transition words and structuring body videos into account. And you're going to create your own story about your pet boa and what he or she ate. And again, it can be, it's your pet boa. So it can be a he or she named whatever you want. Be creative. You're going to sequence and transition words as you tell each event that took place with your boa. So use those sequence and transition words. As you go through each event, you must have at least three events that took place in the boa's journey. I don't know what those events are. They may have eaten your shoes at first, and then they did something else, but those events must take place in your boa's journey, or you're in your boa's journey, whatever your story is, but they must follow a sequence. Again, it can't be brushing your teeth before breakfast. You eat breakfast, and then brush your teeth. So there must be a natural order and natural sequence of things. You must have two details that speed up the action. So you must have two opportunities where the action gets very exciting and you're like, what's going to happen next? And a lot's happening in that action. Just a ton of stuff is happening. And then you need to slow down the action. So you need to have two details that slow down the action. This is going to be turned in through no red ink. It is important to remember that whenever I am grading you, that I'm looking for sequence and transition words. Um, I'm looking for three events that took place and they have to have a natural flow. They have to naturally go together. I'm looking for two details that speed up the action and two details that slow down the action as you're writing. So it's your turn to write about your pet boa. Have fun. Thank you for joining us on the Mrs. Silva Reading and Writing Show. We'll see you next time.